think a more accurate example would be uh, we're building fighter planes. <laughs> they know you say hi, go off into hang crazy on, Hang on, stay with me. Fighter planes with like the shark teeth on the front that look intimidating and so forth. Uh, we're making sure there are wings on the plane because it won't fly without wings. And Paul's going, you know what scares Germans? Shark teeth on planes. And he's out there and he's painting. It's things like your, your plunger thing. The plunger is a great example of joy. We're, we're going, all right, we need to build a world. The whole world it needs to have the ground, it needs to have the sky, we should probably have some trees, put some people in it, buildings, and we have a schedule go. And then Paul comes in and... Well, so I, when I log into a land, the very first thing I do is go in the wrong direction and jump over things and run around things I'm not supposed to be in. This isn't because I'm a griefer. This isn't because I'm trying to upset people. I'm just excitable. I want to go into crazy places. So... Uh, the high up area, I found a way of leaping over a wall and then running down a cliff, and then we, we did it just the right thing. You survived on one hit point because you hit a tree on the way down. You can't hit it every time, like maybe one in three. You hit this tree, and it just keeps you alive. And if you then get until you get the maximum health and throw yourself off again, there's a bush which has got one plane of it, it's got a collision detection in, and you bounce off the bush and on one hit point to the bottom of the cliff near the beach. Now, I mentioned that, and they go, oh, we can fix that. We'll just take the collision detection off the bush and put death in it. No, 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 no. Add a plunger next to some boom pipe. Well, he doesn't it. mean a toilet plunger. He means <laughs> a toilet <laughs> I said, then link it to the Tome of Knowledge. So it says, you have found one of the plungers of the world. And then allow me to trigger it. And then blow me up and fire me back to the top. And then when I land, kill me. And he said, well, why, why would you do that? Because it's awesome. And they went, they went no, that, that's just crazy. It's not crazy. So I meant to build me a plunger. I meant to wire up the Tome of Knowledge, plunger of the world. I put a huge knot back and made them put it there. And then I said, in fact, we should put them everywhere where you can potentially get crazy lost. So we've got this in the dwarf area. There's this bridge. We can push barrels off and they blow up. They kill stuff. But we spent so much time trying to block you from, from falling off this, this bloody cliff. People were always finding ways of doing it. So instead, I went, well, why don't we make it so that if by some miracle you fall off, by some miracle you fall all the way down, and by some miracle you don't die. They went, well, that's impossible. You but if by some miracle you don't die, why don't we in the bottom of the trench flatten out a little path and so they put it in with like no one will, I think it was called no one will ever find this. And then three people did. <laughs> and I went, I'm telling you. And you this can't. sort of behavior in no way impacts our ability to stay on schedule. But it, it, <laughs> it, it's because one, one way is put a death plane in and just go, Ugh! the other way is to go, come on, isn't it crazy? Isn't it? Like we have this other thing we did where um, we, we, we orchestrate very carefully how you can move through the land, how you can progress. And that's fine, but I want to go left. I just do. I like going there. I like it over there. I want to. So I'm going to spend three hours jumping up this hill because I think it's fun. And they were like, "Well, we could just put the levels so you can't get." I said, "No, no. Put a cave there. What? Put a cave. Call it a lair." And they went, "What the hell are we going to put in it? It doesn't matter." <laughs> I said, "But whatever is in there, there should be no quests that tell you about." shouldn't be referenced in any of the stories and whatever is in there should be really dangerous I said what are you talking about I said well let's say it's a level 10 area put a cave here and then put a level 20 monster in they went but it'll kill everyone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool and they're like what are you talking about well I said because you know if you go off the beaten track if you go on the road less traveled you know You'll get eaten. Stick with the herd. the Millennium Falcon into that asteroid. You'll get eaten by a big worm. And it's, it's, it's things like that. So we have these things called lairs, which they put off the beaten track. And the rule is, there isn't any quest, there isn't anything points you there. But if you find your way there, there's something bad. I mean, not always bad. Some have got levers and buttons and halters and, and chests. There's one that's got... And then the levers are bad. And then, then, then I was down in a, 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 a tomb. Mm -hmm. And then it was in Empire. Wandering along this tomb and having a good time, and you've got to find this hammer and there's a quest. It's all very exciting. But then I found there was a, a left turn that was sort of like off, off the, off the tomb, and, and I went down it and I found some stairs, and it just ended in a dead end. 
I said, why is this here? And they went, oh, because of the way we've built it, it's just like an extra dog leg. And I went, put a, put a sarcophagus. They went, what? A cursed sarcophagus. What? And, and call it the cursed sarcophagus. And when you trigger it, it says, do not open. Wait. And then allow them to open. Why? Didn't then spawn some undead horrible creature that's way too powerful. <laughs> that's crazy. It's not crazy. It's the answer. And the same thing happens with the cities. You wander into the cities, and you wander around, you're having a good time, and you're going, oh, this is where I buy my armor, and this is where I get my beer, and this is where I get that, and, and I'm in there, and you know it back to front and inside out, and you've been in it a hundred times. And then one time you're in it, and for no reason whatsoever, there's an enormous demon bashing the thing to pieces and eating people. And they went, well, what, why, why would that be there? Because it's a chaos demon. Well, what's the reason for it being there? Because it's chaos. <laughs> it's just there. Well, won't people get upset? No, they'll get killed. It'll be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and and uh, I'll, I'll be enough. Later on, you're going to be seeing the cities. And the great unclean one. <laughs> He's there for all the world to see. So it's things like that where Josh is right, and to one level they are trying to get the game done. But on the other level, it, this is how you make an imaginative, exciting game. N not by being, you know, not by hand tooling, but by having concepts. The short version of it is, if people ask, what's taken them so long? It's that we're not trying to build, at the end of the day, something that's a rote mechanical experience that basically satisfies a series of checkboxes. Uh, and while this is a creative industry, at the end of the day, it is an industry, and there's always a pressure uh, to generate the product and to put it out onto the market. Uh, we've always had the benefit of, as an independent studio, our pedigree has never gone down that path. Uh, we've never been more interested in hitting a launch date than creating a good game. Uh, and uh, John Riccatello, who's you know, taken charge of EA recently, uh, actually mirrors that very much. Uh, handsome. The extraordinarily handsome, amazing haircut John Riccatello, uh, who came came to visit each of the studios after he took over, uh, and made it very, very clear that uh, EA's goal, in addition to obviously being a public company that tries to make money for its uh, shareholders, for its shareholders who we love, um, is also dedicated to uh, creating quality games. That he expects. Uh, one of the metrics that we utilize is you know, the overall uh, public response to our games needs to be uh, critically positive. Um, that we can't just continue to go out and generate games that are, yeah, make a profit and, and, and off you go. They're, they're looking for high quality games that are evocative, uh, interesting, the types of things that draw in uh, public attention from outside even after the initial hype is gone. Uh, and so in order to do that, you really do need to have the Paul Barnett's of the world kind of come in and squat on your product and go, mm -hmm. what if we dedicated 15 programmers for six weeks to do this thing? It's the strangest thing that people think are cool. It doesn't matter what it is. You buy an enormous stereo. It's got perfect sound. It's high quality. But I'm just really obsessed by this little light that blinks on and off in a pleasing fashion. I just really like it. That, that you go out and buy a car, and it's a beautiful piece of machinery that's immaculately put together. But I'm just really impressed with the way the seat readjusts on this one button. I just really like it. It is the strange little things that breed that sort of joy and, 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 and bind you on a, on a spiritual level to what you're doing. You can't really explain why you like it. I just like this joystick. This controller just feels right. I like these colors. I like the clicky sound. I just like it more than the other one. I can't tell you why. It defies an equation. It's why we're human. It's why the, the, the difficulty with these games is trying to stay away from seeing the pattern. Because you see the pattern and go, oh, I see what it is. And then you can replicate the pattern and miss the spirit. It's why Disney know how to do cartoons and why other people struggle. There's something about it. It's why Apple have cracked how to do these iBody music things. There's just something pleasing. It's why the, it's why the Nintendo Wii makes you go, oh, I can't really explain it. There's something about the way it's angled on that little stand that I just really like, and I don't know why. And it defies common sense, because we're, 
were, were human. And that's what you've got to do in the game. Because we've got 240 people, and tens of millions of dollars, and four years of their life, or three years of their life, <coughs> there's their life, there's a duty to the industrial process, but there's also a duty to be able to stand back and say, we made that. And for people to go, I played that, what a game. What a game. I really enjoyed it. And it's why all great games, it's the tiny things that are loved, not the big things. Tech is as deep as plastic. Gameplay goes on forever. I feel like we should stand up and walk out of the <laughs> 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 I think we should have a big British flag waving behind. <laughs> Glory. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>